We ready? We need peace. So let's begin. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Um, we need Andrea's. You need to unmute your mic, Andrea. Thank you. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, also with you. you. Perfect. Thank you. We are going to continue with the confession and forgiveness. That's on page four, I think. Uh, it is unmuted. Did you find the uh, um, confession? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water. Pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved of God, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven. And God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with the prayer. Let us pray. You might speak up. Oh God, by the passion of your blessed son, you may an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have our first special music from Gary. Say it online. was gorgeous thank you thank you thank you thank you gary we'll continue now with the readings renee is our reader this the first reading is from genesis 17 1 through 7 and 15 and 16 as with noah god makes an everlasting covenant with abraham and sarah 
God promises this old couple that they will be the ancestors of nations, though they have no child together. God will miraculously bring forth new life from Sarah's womb. The name changes emphasize the firmness of God's promise. A reading from Genesis. When Abraham, <clears throat> excuse me, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abraham, I'm sorry, Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name will be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abram, Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, the Psalm is Psalm 22, 23 through 31, and we will read it responsibly. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All of you of Jacob's line, give glory and stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. <clears throat> who go down to the dust though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. The second reading uh, is from Romans 4, 13 through 25. Paul presents Abraham as an example for how a person comes into a right relationship with God, not through works of the law, but through faith. Though Abraham and Sarah were far too old for bearing children, Abraham trusted that God would accomplish what God had promised to accomplish. A reading from Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who do, are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations according to what was said so numerous shall your descendants be. 
He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll continue now with the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said, all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake, for the sake of the gospel, will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my, of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of the Father with the holy angels, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Though it's only the second Sunday in Lent, for me, this Lenten season is already too long. It began with Ash Wednesday and will end on Good Friday, Holy Saturday. In all, Lent lasts six weeks. But this year, for me, it's already way too long. It's just been such an awful time. With my daughter suffering in ice to you, I don't even know what day it is. Someone I care about emailed me the following. This year, she said, it really seems like Lent for you. And oh, it does. So I just long for Easter. I long for new life, for fresh beginnings, for our Lord's presence with us now and forever. Oh, how I long for that right now. Do you ever wonder where God is when things seem more and more difficult, more and more like the somber weariness of Lent? than the glorious joy of Easter. You probably felt like that a time or two. But then people have always wondered about where God is when trouble hits. And that's a fundamental question, not only for Lent, but of faith itself. Certainly, sometimes God seems far from us. Sometimes that's because of our own behaviors, our own sins or lack of faith. Sometimes that's because of the brokenness of the world. And sometimes that's just because it does. Oh, how we all need Easter. For we by ourselves can't remove the obstacles which block our relationship to God, especially those we make for ourselves. But God doesn't give up on us ever. In the biblical account, we can hear that. We can hear how God, through his love, tries to rid those obstacles from us. First, God used covenants, promises of love, like the covenant with Noah that sanctified life, like the covenant with Abraham that made us his people and made him our God. 
And also like the one in Exodus, that law covenant, God gave us those, the law. So we may recognize and avoid those obstacles to our relationships with God and others. That law covenant takes the form most clearly in the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments, those common sense rules for good relationships. For if you love God, you won't allow other things or beings to take God's place. You won't use God's name in the wrong way. You will remember to set aside one day a week to worship God. And if you love others, you'll respect your parents and those others in authority. You won't harm others by murder or adultery. You won't steal. You won't lie about them. You won't obsess over any object or relationship of theirs. Then hundreds of years after God gave those 10 commandments, Jesus distilled them down to just two, love God and love others. But just like God's people have always done, these broke his covenants, broke those commandments. We do those too all the time. We seem not to be able to help ourselves. Yet through it all, God remains faithful to us in all things. So God provided other ways beyond those covenants and those commandments to remove those obstacles. God used judges and kings, prophets, and even the temple in Jerusalem, that formal place for God's people to, for God's people to come to him but the people remained unfaithful and the obstacles remained as well. So in one ultimate like spasm of love for us, thankfully God sent his only begotten son to live, die and rise again to save us, you and me, to take away those obstacles, including death that block our relationships. Also God can be with each one of us forever. Back to that question, where is God? God is present with us through Jesus. And we know this through our faith. And in the mystery of his grace, God can be present to others through you and me, through his people. Each time we see the needs of those around us, each time we love one another, each time we look beyond ourselves and care for them, we come alive. We're energized, we're uplifted. We experience the very blessing of God. Yes, God is present in Jesus. After our Lord's resurrection through the Holy Spirit, God is present everywhere and with you and me always. Through faith, we know this. Besides, that's what God has always promised to do. That's what we heard today in the first reading when we heard the covenant that God made with Abraham. God eternally promised to be God for Abraham and his family and us. We're Abraham's descendants. He promised to be our God. Earlier, the Lord had said to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. And then God said, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God promises to bless his people, which includes you and me. And he promises to be our God always. And then God calls us to be a blessing to the world. So where is God? God is everywhere. Certainly you'll find God within our wonderful community of faith. But that's not the only place. For through his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus shows us that God is no longer up in his heavens. God's on loose. God's on the loose in this world, bringing new life and fresh ways of being, even if we don't accept it or are not aware of it. Yes, God brings to us, those like me who are stuck in the pain of Lent, the hope of Easter. For Easter, a forever Easter breaks through that pain with eternal joy of God's presence. Well, as I said this week, a friend emailed me, compassionate email, and she thought that it was, she could really see that for me, it was like Lent. And it does seem like it. 
though my daughter is no longer so close to death and will eventually be home. She remains very ill. Yes, my life still feels a lot like Lent, but so do the lives of many people. We all need Easter. Long ago, an African-American pastor addressed people like us who need Easter. It was during a Holy Week and he preached to a deeply troubled congregation. First, the pastor listed one by one the hard things that had hit this congregation. At each point, he said, it feels like Good Friday is upon us, but Easter is coming. Soon that congregation caught on to this refrain so that after each point, they'd enthusiastically recite, but Easter is coming. Though this sermon was preached decades and decades ago, it's still true. Maybe the challenges of your life, like mine, seem so overwhelming, like Good Friday upon us, but Easter is coming. Maybe the brokenness and insecurity of the world, especially as the disruption of the pandemic and the continued, pand uh, continued political unrest goes on and on and on. Like Good Friday upon us, Easter is coming. Maybe Lent for me and maybe for you already seems too long, like Good Friday upon us but Easter is coming. Thanks be to God, Easter is coming. Hallelujah, Easter is coming, amen. Special music by Gary. Oh, thank you, Gary. Thank you, thank you. So beautiful. The Apostles' Creed. I think, Andrea, the your mic is muted. Go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All the ends of the earth worship you. From galaxies to microorganisms, preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at your works and to join you in tending to, to creation's well-being. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depths of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving, especially this week. We pray for uh, Kent and, and Marcia's daughter, Susie, Christina, Geneva, Jerry, Dennis, Pastor, and Dick and all those on our list of continuing concern. Uh, bring vindication for victims of injustice, exploitation, and oppression, and hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations, bless grandparents, parents, foster parents, and the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with inf infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children belonging to, adopt to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We ask your blessings on our fellow churches, those serving in the military, and all of our members, especially those listed for the prayer for this week. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We await the day of Christ coming in glory. Lead us by the example of all the saints whom you have called to take up their cross and follow you, that together we may find our lives in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to get the, your elements for communion and we will begin. Let us begin. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide. Together with rivers and seas, wells and springs we bless and magnify you you led your people israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock we praise you for christ our rock and our water we praise you for christ who joined us in our desert pouring out his life for the world please lift up the bread in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please eat of the bread, the body of Christ given for you. Please lift the cup. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all for, to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please drink of the cup 
the blood of Christ shed for you. Remembering therefore his life, death and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The prayer. No, special music. Special music. Very, sorry, special music. Okay, I think you probably did. Let's continue now with the prayer after communion. I was right. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our, that our lives bear witness to, in the, to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Now it's Gary's turn and he's well worth waiting for. Thank you. Wonderful. Bless you, Gary. Go in peace. Make God's love known.
Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We forgot to unload, didn't we? Amen. Amen. Good, job. Good job. Thank you. This was a really tough service with all the moving pieces, but you were all wonderful and I appreciate all your good work. So thank you for being here and let's hope for a better week next week. Pastor, we, we have a question for you. We'd like to know which, how can we help you best with groceries delivered or with meals delivered? Marcia and I like to do that. Oh, how nice. We what would help you better, groceries or meals? We don't need either, tell you the truth. Oh. But maybe maybe in a couple of weeks when Christina gets home, okay, yeah. we, could, we could hit you up then. But okay. right now we are doing really well. Carlos, the school provided several meals for us, which was oh, just, wow. it Very was nice. just amazing. I mean, I didn't expect that at all. So, but I guess they did it in the school lunchroom, you know, but just the same. It was just, but I was nice. talking about angels last week or a week, I don't know, a while ago. And it just seems like they're popping up everywhere and they're just wonderful. And yes, Peggy's nodding her head. She's been going through a, a tough time too, but it is just, just something. Anyway, I thank you. And thank you guys, Kent and Marcia, for your offer. And I don't oh, sure. Okay. A couple of weeks, we'll check. We would love, we would love uh, meals from restaurant. If you had, to, or, you know, a brought in one. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm a lousy cook. So if <laughs> <laughs> frozen food, uh, any of that, just pop it in the oven. That it would be good. <laughs> okay. Well, Kent and Marcia, you could share that 